Hey, it's I'm Jake. I'm Christine. And that's Peach, and our Christine. dog. We're all ex Jehovah's Witnesses, not Peach, actually. She's post Jehovah's Witness, but we we are here for a very exciting stream because everything is totally different. There was a recent update that announced tons of new changes. The disfellowshipping arrangement is totally different. What about baptized minors, those under 18 years of age who engage in serious wrongdoing? Under our current arrangement, such a baptized minor, along with his Christian parents, must meet with a committee of elders. Under our new arrangement, two elders will meet with the minor and his Christian parents. However, what if a baptized minor unrepentantly persists in a wrong course? In that case, a committee of elders would meet with him along with his Christian parents. The Bible clearly teaches that an unrepentant wrongdoer should be removed from the congregation. And really, it's a consequence that the wrongdoer has chosen. When a person has been removed from the congregation, we stop keeping company with that person, not even eating with such a man. That means we don't socialize with those who are removed from the congregation. We wouldn't have an extended conversation or socialize with such a person if a disfellowship individual is a known apostate or someone who actively promotes wrongdoing. The elders would not visit him. Neither would individual Christians greet such a person or invite him to attend a congregation meeting. But but dress and that seems kind of the same. But the dress and grooming is totally different Completely now. Different. It's a whole new organization. When a sister has a part on the program, she should wear a skirt or a dress if that is the standard of dress in that land. When a brother has a part on the program, he should wear a tie and a jacket if that is the standard of dress in that land. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> everyone welcome to the show uh the sunday service it's the one and only the one and only this is the only show that streams on sundays in the united states of america yeah i can't speak for any other country true or and state for that matter and we won't <laughs> i don't know what we're doing but uh hey you're my wife right i am your wife and our dog was here but she doesn't like being on camera famously yes. yeah all of my hair is crazy okay listen my dress and grooming need some work but for more than just what the governing body is telling us but i don't need to change that much to go to a meeting because true my facts. beard i don't need to shave it and that's interesting that's aesthetically different than it was before um we're here because there is uh, th there was this update and it's the talk of the town with literally witnesses. and I would say the talk of the world, and I can say that pretty confidently. Well, it's I a... can't speak for other countries when it comes to what streams on Sunday, but I can certainly say everybody around around this blue globe. <laughs> I'm just letting you it. flounder. You. No, I'm not uh, floundering. I know exactly what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Well, I just, you know, it is world news because this is a global organization. And there's 8 million members in some 235 lands. Lands. Now, you might be wondering what kind did of... Did that lands? What kind of... No, nothing is landing <laughs> so far. But I did want to... Um, we're talking about this because we're ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, or I am. I don't know what... Nobody knows what I want. Nobody knows what you are. No, and I don't even know what I am. Or who you are. Who even though I? we've introduced you now several times, my wife, Christina. Um, <laughs> I don't but know who that is. All ex Jehovah's Witnesses are being inundated with text messages, mm -hmm. except for people like me who are known apostates, as we saw in that little montage. I don't count, but there that, are some. That's, a, that's news to me that you're a known apostate. Are that's... you known around the world? <laughs> I, I'm world famous, absolutely. <laughs> from from the Sunday service, which I don't know if we've mentioned before, is the only show in America that's streams on Sundays. <laughs> And some people say that we do too long of introductions before getting into it. And I don't agree at all. Um, but I wanted to. Um, this is our show. This is true. First of all, 
absolutely. <laughs> Fuck anybody who says that we're not doing a good job. <laughs> also, we curse sometimes. So that maybe, maybe <laughs> I do. Um, I wanted to start by reading, uh, uh, I guess it's not a tweet, a thread, a message from a thread uh, on the platform threads from one of my extra witness friends, uh, germ mentally diseased. Um, he, he posted something that really spoke to my heart, spoke the language of my heart to use, uh, act, or try to use JW language. I'm very, very tired and struggling, but I think we wanted to shout out some of the messages that we've seen yeah. from Jehovah's witnesses and stuff. I don't have my phone. Oh, okay. I can go get it. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm just going to read this message from, from my phone for a second. Um, so this, this is what Jerm posted on, on threads. I, I think he'd be all right with me saying this, but he said, in regards to the XJW news today, fuck the JWs and fuck their quote improvements. A caged bird is still caged, no matter how much more comfortable you keep their cage. Mm. I'm happy that women can wear pants and they can now afford disfellowship people a single degree of humanity. But no matter what, they are still scam artists coercing people into believing things that are not true in order to take their money and time. Also, it is 2024. We are demanding that the men be allowed to wear skirts now. <laughs> the only improvements they'll ever make will involve whitewashing what they've done, dismissing the accounts of those who've suffered under them and parading about as if nothing ever happened, all while expecting congratulations for it. I've come to peace now with the fact that I want nothing less than for them to simply disappear. Um, a, a lot of people who, you know, kind of haven't been on YouTube or, for a while have commented about it. Ben Ford, my old buddy, commented about it like, you know what? I just realized I don't really care about this anymore. It's really stupid. But I think that what's interesting about this for those who don't know, who don't have any context, you probably haven't made it seven minutes into an incomprehensible stream, but <laughs> basically there are some very slight adjustments. You can now say hi to a disfellowship person for one second when they walk into a kingdom hall. Thank God. You can invite uh, your disfellowship family members to the meeting, which loving. as far as I know has always been allowed. Uh, and then women can wear pants Hallelujah. Slacks. Hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. What a loving arrangement. But also, as we saw, um, no, you still have to wear them on stage or when visiting Bethel. I think I forgot to include that in the Yeah, you have to made. wear like a skirt or a dress. It's still the same. Yeah. It's still the same. So they've, you know, they, they've shuffled around deck chairs on the bird cage, which is also the Titanic. I'm going to get into the video here, which I just realized I don't have pulled up. Um, I can... Uh read something that i felt yeah yeah read read a message while i pull up the video in question so this is a fellow xjw who got a um text message inviting them to i think the special talk or the memorial because we all know that's coming up soon that's sweeps weeks for jehovah's witnesses yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um, and I just thought that their a response at the end was really great. Um, they said, I'm really glad you reached out. Didn't mean to make you feel attacked. But if you think that the governing body update number two isn't publicly known, you are mistaken. All of, all of a sudden, because of this update, friends that I miss get to remind me of all of the friends and family that shun me because the group of men running your organization controls who you can talk to and what you can wear. And I found that very powerful because yeah. from so, for somebody who's leaving a high control group or a cult, your spiritual and emotional and mental healing is an ongoing process. So when you have people who are texting you, hi, and like come to the memorial or whatever, like it's just reopening and making that progress to heal even harder. Yeah. And it's like dangling a carrot in front of you that they can potentially, they can't socialize with you, but they can acknowledge your presence at that point, either ignore me or treat me as a human being. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think 
the reason why it's interesting to talk about is because it would otherwise be so uninteresting to anybody else in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Like this is how tight of a leash they have on Jehovah's witnesses, you know, the, the leadership who I think I, I want to be clear. We love Jehovah's witnesses as people and we both have family mm -hmm. and friends that are Jehovah's witnesses. And obviously it's where we spent most of our lives. Um, and we, we, we feel for them. We want mm. them to not be in a high control group where even the smallest thing, like who you can say hi to is legislated by these, these men. Now, I also want to recognize that uh, we're going to talk a, a lot about the governing body or, but they love Jehovah. I mean, it's all about Jehovah. Do in they fact, love Jehovah or do they love themselves? Well, I mean, look at the description for this. Look at the description. <laughs> In this update, we will consider how our wonderful father, Daddy Jehovah, demonstrates <laughs> Daddy. that he desires all to. I mean, they, look, they say Jehovah right there. Um, mm. So this is all about God. The governing body. The governing body is confident. The governing body has decided. The governing body has decided. The governing body has concluded. However, the governing body has decided. The governing body has decided. Before we conclude, the governing body has asked me to read the following announcement. We love you all very much. I just realized I should have put a funny poop where he says the following announcement, but then I, I ran out of time as I always do. I want to shout out a couple uh, chat people before we get into it. <laughs> I'm so tired. I don't know why I've never been this tired in my life. I slept in until like 11 o'clock. You had to sure wake me did. up, which I never do. Confirm or deny? I can neither confirm nor deny. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> um, I also, um, actually, WK says JW has only adopted a worldly thing after it's been out of fashion for at least a decade. And that's <laughs> kind I mean, of true. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about slacks and beards and you know, business. What topics. is this? The 70s? Oh my god, they don't like to talk about the 70s. <laughs> um, I also is that that they never existed. That's right. Um, in the moment says this seems to be an attempt to isolate and distinguish posse from the typical disfellowship person. Yeah. I think that that's uh that's insightful. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um Honestly, the update to disfellowshipping stuff made me angry. It bothers me to see them soften it and try to avoid legal trouble but keep on shunning people like that somehow loving that this is the other comment I wanted to shout out, which is if you look at uh, one of the last streams I did, it was with Norwegian activist Jan Fru Nielsen, who was instrumental in this recent court ruling. Mm, mm -hmm. Jehovah's witnesses were defunded because of their shunning practices, because essentially it violates the laws of religious freedom. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to leave without severe consequences and minors can get baptized, which is why I made sure to include that in a little montage. They actually have changed almost nothing as far as I can tell, other than you get a few more strikes before they say you're out. And I think that that's what really bothers me also is the fact that they're changing these arbitrary rules that should not exist anyways when the issues yeah. are systematic there it's the shunning it's the how you treat you know apostates or what they deem to be apostate it's right those things it's the blood issue it's things like that that can potentially violate your human rights that those are things that aren't being fixed but you are can now wear slacks as a woman a huge eye roll on that and you can grow a beard as a man. You know. Thank God. The thing that naturally grows on your God-given face. Yes. And why can't a woman decide to wear pants or a dress if you're dignified and modest, which are the parameters for JW dress and grooming? Listen, Jehovah created us as naked people. <laughs> and clothes were an afterthought. But he's actually incredibly concerned about what clothes you wear. Because if you wear the wrong kind of leg covering fabric to his favorite building, he won't love you as much as other people. Well, you know why? Because you're not wearing leaves. <laughs> That's been Jehovah's thing <laughs> since like day three of mankind. He's like, you fucking people keep making clothes. I wanted leaves. Okay, so we... <laughs> 
Um, also, we did, uh, by we, I mean just me, uh, did a stream you. on, I mean, you weren't there, uh, on Friday, <laughs> which you can see if you join Patreon. I did a, like kind of a first reaction stream with my patrons, had some of them call in. It was really fun, just kind of venting. Uh, so I've gotten a lot of my thoughts on this out, but I don't think you've actually watched this from beginning to end. You've just seen clips, right? I don't even think I've seen clips. You just know I, of the I just, adjustments. Yes. I just know about the updates because it's been on my Facebook feed. It's been uh, an ongoing like text message that we've had we have with right. your aunt. Like that's why I know. Right. I, but I've literally not watched this because I refuse to watch anything JW broadcast. Well, I got some really bad. I am refusing you. right now. <laughs> well, it's been a great show, it's everyone. Like God given for... right to wear slacks and to refuse to watch it. Again. It is. <laughs> it is. Um, however, I'm going to watch it, and you yeah. will, you can feel free to leave uh, at okay, any time. Bye. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. no, you've been pumped for this. No, I, I, yes, because I have so many opinions. You do. You have many opinions and thoughts, and yeah, how could you not? Okay, so let's get into this. Um, we're just going to play it, and I think we're going to react. And you just tell me when when to pause. I don't want that responsibility. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> and I'm going to mute us while it's playing so that there's no feedback in the mic because our Bluetooth headphones were being stinky earlier. Mm, stinky. Mm, stinky. <laughs> Welcome to our update. How did the 2023 annual meeting affect you? Remember the information that highlighted Jehovah as the merciful judge of all the earth? We were thrilled to learn that individuals who died in the flood of Noah's day. This is 1.2 speed, by the way, which I, I didn't even realize. I, I went to increase the speed and this is the increased speed. Whoa, uh, shut up. Yeah, That's upsetting to me on so many levels. I could go to 1.5, but I have a little trouble following it when it's 1.5. Yeah, yeah. This is fine. Um, Okay, well, remember that. Remember how good the convention was that the governing body made? <laughs> remember? Remember? Remember that? I remember. Ah, <laughs> uh, we all remember and love the governing body so much. In the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, and even some who might repent during the Great Tribulation, could benefit from Jehovah's mercy. Since hearing that information, have you found yourself thinking a lot about Jehovah's mercy? Well, so has the governing body. In our prayerful study, way to incept that idea <laughs> into people's minds. The convention that they put on and made <laughs> and wrote all the talk outlines and made all the videos, wouldn't you know it? They've been thinking about it. But have you? Have you? Because we have. Yeah. The the governing body member. Member. Has. Which implies that you definitely should have been thinking about it. hundred percent. If you if you were following God's Holy Spirit, you absolutely yeah. should be thinking about it. Yeah, we love that. <laughs> Look how uh, <laughs> firm and determined he I is. I do have to say, I do love the beard on him. The thing that I meant to bring up when I mentioned that stream on Friday is that we had a chatter. Maybe they'll show up and uh, credit themselves for this, but I, I forget who said it. Santa Claus. That's a brilliant. I thought I heard you say that it's, on Friday, and I was yeah. like, "That's brilliant." I think that's got to be the canonical name for Maybe Bearded he's Sanderson. Sky da Daddy. Sky Dandy. <laughs> he is a little Sky Dandy. Sky Dandy. <laughs> that's what angels are called. <laughs> Meditation and discussions. We've focused our attention on how Jehovah has dealt with people who engaged in serious sin. In this update. We'll briefly consider the pattern Jehovah set in the Bible record. Then we'll discuss some new information regarding the way we'll handle cases of wrongdoing in the Christian congregation. But doesn't this like set up the like, doesn't it make you think like, oh, wow, they're going to like get like, rid of disfellowshipping or something? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it totally does. I'm going to close this window a little bit. That's, it is cold. A little chilly. We had some fresh air going, but... Yeah. Not anymore. Okay, so this is the Not now Sanders is looking Peter tired. Three. No, no, Sanders Claus, come back. Um, <laughs> with the governing body stinking it up in here, it's definitely not fresh air. You are. Uh, how do we sound, by the way, to everybody watching? Do we sound okay? Sound off. Bear, what are you saying? 
the he's Santa Claus and judging. Oh, by, totally. It's true. I mean, you. They're definitely in, it's a stiff competition. Mark right now. wishes. He wishes. Yeah. <laughs> now, how do you feel about the fact that Hi. I hear "Hi, Christina" and not? <laughs> they see you all the time. Anyone else? Settle in the room. down. Interesting. Some people are greeting only one person on the show. Verse well, nine. They, really, they tells us be that Jehovah. Uh, Sander Claus. That's like, right. Hi, Sander Claus. Hi, Sander Claus. <laughs> come down my chimney and leave me a magazine. Oh, he'd be he'd be more than happy to come down your chimney. <laughs> Does not desire anyone to be destroyed, but desires all to attain to repentance. What does that teach us? It helps us understand that Jehovah wants people to repent and gain life. When the first human couple rebelled, they condemned the human race to sin and death. What did Jehovah do? <laughs> okay, I wanted to say, uh, no, God condemned the human race to sin and death. Yes. Not Adam and Eve. They didn't have well, that power, actually. I mean, according to doctrine, they did have that power. Wow, you're going to run defense for Mark Sanderson. He's Sander Claus. Sander Claus. He's going to be delivering my Christmas present. So I got to be on, on the good list. <laughs> what do you what make of this reasoning that he's uh, mentioning here? That Jehovah doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. Well, I feel like that's inaccurate. I feel I feel as though if that's really what Jehovah wanted, sis systemic issues would be adjusted or fixed or gotten rid of he he's got the day and the hour like on his calendar when he's gonna do a genocide on he, so many people he won't tell us though 99 percent of the he's human race him and israel's prime minister are in cahoots together <laughs> Wow, I've done such a good job of not mentioning anything specific about that conflict on stream. I'm sorry. And, and spicy Christina. <laughs> no, I, I don't care. I just don't want to get demonetized. But you're sorry. right. Sounds like Jehovah and certain dictators have a little something in common. <laughs> just saying. I mean, if we're talking genocide. She's drinking wine. I mean, this is going to be a spice hey. stream. A spice would be the most. I'm drinking wine because we're watching this. No, I know. <laughs> I absolutely know. Absolutely. And people, <laughs> they, Christina, it's true. It's true. This is what, look at this sad sack motherfucker. This is what he does. He's literally to us. just skin and a beard. <laughs> I don't think that's literally true, but I know what you mean. <laughs> no, I didn't mean literally, but. <laughs> Anyway, he took immediate steps to help as many of their descendants as possible to gain life. Did he? He took immediate steps. He immediately started working behind the scenes for a ceasefire between himself and humans. Yeah. Let's not let's not yeah. get into that. <laughs> let's not get into that. Yeah. Through the sacrifice of Jesus, Jehovah arranged to cover the sins of all who would exercise faith and repent. Such ones can live forever. So. It's not surprising that throughout the Bible record, we find Jehovah appealing to sinners to repent. Ah. Uh... <laughs> you do you do a good Sanderson impression. <laughs> Say words. Say words. What do you think about this? I I, I really don't like this. Well, I think that it's all like preamble i don't think that it's true you're saying i should get past the introduction and get into the meat yes, of the broadcast yes i want to talk about so how much like, i hate god <laughs> i appreciate the fact that you want to take steps to analyze what he's saying but i feel like at this point he's just trying to he's trying to ease everybody in you're right you're right because <laughs> it's only how, how two minutes in this is why people want you on the show more, because I will be like, now that little um that he made, let me talk about that for five minutes. He urges those who had strayed from true worship to return. This is in harmony with Romans 2, verse 4, which says, Or do you consider some examples in which we see Jehovah trying to lead sinners to repentance? Cain, a passion for...
imperfect. So I guess I would like to understand what Jehovah has done to lead sinners back. Because in my opinion, people who have been shunned don't typically want to come back. And when if they do come back, they don't stay very long after. Mm -hmm. Whether it's they just fade or they're inactive or whatever. So to me, that's not any indication that God is trying to lead people back by using shunning as a technique. Well, that's what that's exactly what he's done. Jehovah, he <laughs> loves people so much. He tries to, he'll be like, come back and serve me or I'll destroy you or I'll cause you famine, which will kill you. Or I won't give you the cake that I rain from the sky. If you <laughs> mess the up cake. the birthday cake, the birthday cake from the sky, <laughs> manna, Jehovah. He loves people via threats, violent threats. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why human, the human race follows suit in that way. He 100% doesn't want anybody to be destroyed, but he will destroy the shit out of 99% of the human race. Do you think that if the Bible didn't exist and it, it didn't give examples of God destroying the wicked, that humans would still be violent? I know that we're predators yes. by nature, but would it be to the extent that like... People, people wouldn't have a reason to justify it. Oh, no. I think people would justify it no matter what. I think mm -hmm. there are like people of other religions and also people who are completely a-religious. Maybe, th maybe that's just my, my idealistic outlook on things. No, but I mean, it's absolutely true that people use the Bible as a scapegoat for atrocities. Like, it's what slavers did mm -hmm. in, in the South and the United States. And it's what they use the Bible it, to justify slavery. And it's what Jehovah's Witnesses do to justify shunning. Yeah. I exactly. mean, three minutes into this broadcast, and Sanderson has already brought out two scriptures to justify why they've done what they've done. Yeah. Even though you're pulling from a specific, you're pulling a specific scripture to apply to the situation instead of the entirety of what that scripture is great one of my favorite little details of jehovah's witness theology actually david caleb says jehovah can't fulfill his own will also this armageddon thing won't work this isn't the last time god destroys everyone in an effort of cleansing the earth but he keeps fucking up <laughs> because the um once you're in the the new system, the thousand year mm -hmm. reign. There's going to be Armageddon round two at the end of that. Correct. It's just like another, another cleanse, another brief purge. Anarchy. L like, yeah. <laughs> like a movie. Yeah. <laughs> also, shout out to XJW Caleb. And I watched that the video you did about Jesus dying on a stake or a cross. Excellent work. Hey, very mm -hmm. nice. It was very good. I also wanted to, okay, I need someone to explain this to me. I saw a post on the XJW subreddit that's like the Jubilee's coming. And I had no idea what the fuck anyone was talking about. Everyone <laughs> spoke about it like they knew exactly what the Jubilee was. Isn't that a teaching of like what the Israelites would do during like the time of the Passover? Or like when the harvest ended? I know it's like a word from the Bible and from that YouTube series where Mormons debate ex-Mormons and stuff. But I, and incels debate people who have sex but i don't know what it means for modern day jehovah's witnesses i have no idea so somebody explain that to me or else <laughs> he's gone to great lengths to make forgiveness possible to appeal to sinners and to lead them to repentance if at all possible what a compassionate and merciful god we worship the governing body has prayerfully considered how jehovah's mercy could be better reflected when dealing with wrongdoers in the congregation. Okay. Mm. The, I caught, the, I don't think I caught this. How can Jehovah's mercy be better reflected in the Christian congregation? So that's, that's how they're justifying what caused them to make these very small adjustments that they were not being merciful enough as is. But that's not them apologizing for the thing before. Oh, they will, they will never apologize. You yeah. will never see them apologize or give reparations or admit that they were wrong. They will always just make 
subtle adjustments to what's already already taking place and sugarcoat it in a way of like, but this is God's mercy. He realizes that we're getting so close to the end yeah. and that he needs to be more merciful and he needs to take more time leading those who have fallen away, leading them back when it's, it, they're never, it's never going to be an outright apology when that's what people want. That's like your mom or dad saying like something really horrible to you and then coming back and not necessarily apologizing. They're justifying why they said that to you and making it your, your mistake. But here are the processes back to having a good relationship with them. Talk about an example that hits ho close to home, host to clone. <laughs> That is exactly what my parents did. I don't yeah. think my parents ever apologized for anything. That's exactly the kind of language that they used. Mm -hmm. And the language, even among Jehovah's Witnesses, is not to apologize. It's to make peace with your Correct. brother. So that's, yeah. I think that this is what really feels shitty about all this stuff. It's mm -hmm. like, they, they'll never even tacitly acknowledge the harm caused by the previous teaching. They'll just be like, you should be thankful to us for changing the teaching at all. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the fact that we're willing to change this harmful thing that we're now basically admitting that we're wrong about, that's supposed to give you faith in this new thing, which as far as you know, we could be equally wrong about. Yeah, I mean, there's not really been a moment to solidify my trust that they know what they're doing. It's just them making up things as they go. This is an interesting point. Um, doesn't exactly seem more urgent getting closer to the end now, does it? And I think, you know, their their reasoning is probably like, well, we need to appeal to as many people mm -hmm. as possible and stop people from leaving. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure that that's their justification. Sure. People realize, like, you know, I don't want to, um, I don't know how she would feel about me talking about her directly, but I had a family member who got, who, who is inactive and got a text. Oh, yeah, that's right. From, another family member and the family member was like you just you don't understand like it's such a different organization now like it's so loving and reasonable to watch this video and it's like okay so you're acknowledging that the organization used to be dogmatic and unreasonable mm. and was cruel and now it's better but they're not apologizing for that right it's just like you should have never left because we didn't we put up with all this bullshit but if the bullshit's what caused you to leave, you should come back because now there's a little bit less of it. I don't. Uh, yes. Yeah. Use the toilet that doesn't have as much shit on it. <laughs> there's also like, I love that analogy, first of all. There's less turds on the toilet seat on this one. I also think like it's really interesting to me that they have no real justification for why they're making these changes at all. Like, Correct. yes, they refer to the scriptures, Correct. but then they just say the governing body has decided. And it's not like they don't even paint this as like a new understanding or like they prayed about it. And Jehovah right. has revealed this. It's just like, we've decided slacks are fine now. That's, That's the new rule. It's all PR. The, yeah. the Norway ruling was not in their favor. Now they have to, you know, backtrack and they have to, you know, clean up whatever mess they feel needs cleaned up. On the toilet seats. Correct. <laughs> There's still some, some turds there, but at least That's it's right. not, at least it's not as much as it was before. Our lawyers have decided. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how much, I think it is legal. I think it's legal stuff. And like Christina was saying, like PR consulting firms and stuff, because this is what uh, Mormons do. It's mm -hmm. what Scientologists do. Like they meet with firms that actually look at their numbers, think tanks and uh, lobbying groups who work with groups like this. Um, so they're making decisions based on, on money and retaining membership and stuff. It, it's more strategic. It's like, here's what we know the strategy needs to be. What scriptures can we wrap around that? I, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the best way to say it. Um, look at this face. This looks like a guy who just sat he, on a turd covered toilet seat and doesn't know how he feels about it yet. He reminds me of oh, what is that cartoon dog that has like the droopy dog? Yes. 
He sort of looks like Dream <laughs> All right, let's watch some more. And that's led to a clearer understanding of three scriptures. Let's consider the first. It's 2 Timothy 2, verses 24 and 25. There Paul said, For a slave of the Lord does not need to fight and repent. Paul used an in Ephesus who had scriptural counsel and become involved in serious wrongdoing. I'm hmm. skipping past the scriptures because they don't matter. <laughs> they don't matter. I mean, they, it doesn't matter to the governing body. They're just pretending like it does. So why should we? It's the same fucking scriptures that they always use, by the way. It's well, like they use the same 25 scriptures and now they're just. You know. I love how I love how he's like, and that gave us a better understanding of three major scriptures. Really? Only three. Just those three. Because they narrowed it down. Because <laughs> if you if you look at those three scriptures, what does the context say around that scripture? Right. So it should be more than three. Yeah, you would think that this would <laughs> well, I mean, they are making a lot of changes very quickly, but anyway. At least they can count to three. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't. I want to make sure I shout out a super chat from Colder Pizza. Hey. That work, wanted to stop by and say hi. And Gregory Densford, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. We've been reading the Bible lately and uh, <laughs> noticed <laughs> that it actually doesn't mention slacks at all. That's the other thing. When we get to that part, yeah. What's the justification behind none? Slacks? There's no justification. It's amazing. Why can't it be jeans? Well, that why, why can't it be ripped jeans? Well, you can't see it on camera, but I've got some ripped jeans on right now. I that I'm having a hard time getting around the cords. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, let's watch a little bit more. Maybe they'll explain why slacks, you know, because made in America business slacks that you can get from JC Penny <laughs> are okay, but jeans that fucking everybody around the world has are not. So okay. you're telling me made in America is better than. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I just, it's still so American corporation. Oh, 100%. It is. Yeah, it's like, I get it. it's like they've looked at the business world and said, like, well, you know, most companies don't make people wear ties. So I guess we don't have to. Like, <laughs> stop pretending like you give a shit about the Bible. Well, right. Exactly. I've stopped pretending to. Why can't they? <laughs> not everybody's, everybody can be you, Jake. Why can't they just be cool like me? <laughs> Ask Someone who right gets involved in, in serious wrongdoing right needs in. help from the elders. So a committee of elders meets with the wrongdoer. The goal of these elders isn't merely to judge whether the wrongdoer is repentant, but Shit. sorry, you were oh. muted. My bad. Whoa. Sorry. That's rude. First time it's ever happened. <laughs> I just was saying it they are looking for reasons to judge. Yeah. So again, we are using language that allows them to back out real nicely without any any harm. That's a good point because they are definitely like if you're in a judicial committee, right? Mm -hmm. You're in trouble. Correct. They have determined that you messed up somehow and you need counsel. What the elders are judging is how repentant are you for the thing that they have already decided that you're guilty for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was silencing women on screen. I'm so sorry. As you should be. Thank you. I already, I already experienced it enough in my past life. <laughs> Lift these. <laughs> also, to act in harmony with 2 Timothy 2, 24 and 25. The elders must correct is there and feedback? instruct the wrongdoer Check. with mildness. What is their goal? Notice what another study note on 2 Timothy 2, 25 says. Now, I when like a Christian this. Elder... I like this because they write the study notes. So I, <laughs> so I heard you say that on Friday, I think, when you were streaming. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, that's such a good point because... I recommend if you stream being married to someone that's very supportive because I love blocking it out and I love being like, oh, she listened and she thought I said something good. That's nice. I love it. Thank you. You're so welcome. I just like getting compliments. <laughs> I just, I find it interesting because 
as a PME JW, you're like, these study notes are fucking awesome. Like, <laughs> they do say that word for word. <laughs> At least that's how I felt when I was teeny and I was studying. I did. Too, I yeah. love the study Bible because you could read all the study notes. And then you said that on Friday, like they write the study notes. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a teacher writing the test questions and the answers and going like, I did a pretty good job, didn't I? Yeah. With that test. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It'd be, it would be like. Imagine you go and you take a, a class at a university or something and the professor's like, OK, uh, you're going to study this book that I wrote. Mm -hmm. You're going to cross reference it with other books that I wrote. <laughs> yes. You are not allowed to Google my name and nope. see what other people think of the stuff that I write. Or you're not allowed to Google anything in order to understand a bigger context of why i'm asking you that question yeah just believe just believe that what's on the test it that's what you need to know i also want to shout out more super chats double o for, with a super sticker and season greetings from sandra Claus <laughs> from show enough soul bro on what a Woo! great name that i love saying yeah it was super fun everyone also, have a fun uh, 100 percent Christina. Yeah. Yes. We all love compliments, do we not? <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure Sanderson would love the Santa Claus comment compliment. Yeah. Also, if you don't follow the professor's rules, you get kicked out of class. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And your family's not allowed to talk to you anymore. The professor not during has... the test. <laughs> they can they can invite you back to the class. <laughs> briefly in a text message yes. and then limit their contact mildly oh. corrects or instructs those not favorably disposed the good result may be repentance or a change of mind the credit change to of change mind. Of and attitude <laughs> goes not to any human but to jehovah who helps the wayward christian change make this What's vital change again? paul in thinking and or a change of mind Oh, change the credit for such a change oh, in thinking oh, nice. and attitude <laughs> goes <laughs> not to any human, but to Jehovah, who helps the wayward Christian make this vital change. Paul goes on to mention some of the beautiful results of such repentance. It leads the sinner to a more well. accurate they knowledge of the truth. Note. It helps him come back to his proper... Did they write a whole other fucking Bible in the study note? Yeah, 24 and 25, adjust our current arrangement. Present adjust our current arrangement i'm always having to adjust my arrangement you know what i mean yeah i'm constantly seeing you do so <laughs> what else what else <laughs> oh yeah we haven't gotten into a very uh important piece of this which is that all of this like freight train of slight adjustments and policy uh comes hot on the heels of anthony morris can i say I said that when they started making the changes, like with the beard and stuff. Like, it's true. Are you a prophet? S. Okay. <laughs> I heard S. A prophet. <laughs> that means I'm a woman who can tell the future. A prophetess. Oh, I see. <laughs> I thought you meant to say yes and said S. No. I was like, did you say S? Quoting Pierce <laughs> from Community in the scene where he says that. No, I was making it gender specific. But... No, that this is a great point. And yes, you did. You you obviously agree because you made this point. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. Like they are making a lot of changes. It, it's I guess it could be coincidence, but it sure doesn't seem like it, especially knowing his personality. Correct. Them bringing in these two other guys who look like clones of Mark Sanderson. <laughs> and, you know, then. See, the governing body can't grow hair on their head, but they can grow hair on their beard. That's their adjustment and understanding. You know, <laughs> that's a good point because Jeffrey Jackson has a goatee and what? he's got a beard. I th Does Stephen Lett have a beard? I feel like I don't I... think his face could handle another thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a busy face. <laughs> He's got a lot going on with his face already. We should not encourage him to grow a beard. <laughs> a woman with prophet powers. What is this? The Bible? <laughs> How do they deal with that, by the way? How do they deal with prophetesses? They don't. Prophetesai. They're like 
they're mentioned maybe twice in the Bible and then in any publication where they talk about like prophets and stuff. Yeah, they like just that. don't really. Not, not at all. Because a woman can't be a prophet in their mind. Brother Lish hair. This, I really wonder about this, right? I mean, yeah. I think the thing with Anthony Morris is that it seems to me that he was a firm believer up to the very second that he was forced out. Yeah. We don't know anything about, like, is he going to meetings and stuff like that, but it doesn't quite seem like Ray Franz, who was, I, I don't know, a had spirit, a crisis like of conscience where it seemed like <laughs> Anthony Morris had a crisis of dogmatism. Yeah. <laughs> I want yeah. to be meaner and they want to be slightly less yeah, crazy. Yeah, because if, if Anthony Morris was still around, he'd be like, Brothers can't wear tight pants and and sisters can't wear any pants. They have to wear skirts. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, or no pants at all. I don't know. Depends on what kind of weird guy he is. Jehovah himself invented loose pants for men and skirts for women that were below the ankles. They draped along the Even floor. Even though in the time of the first century Christians, you could say that the men wore dresses they all just kind of wore robes and togas and shit yeah so when did jehovah get so specific when did god get specific that's a really good question i'm having a question which is can i go and get a cup of coffee so i'm thinking about that right now do you want to take the wheel like jesus himself i, sure, I can yeah sure this is the mouse um i just click it Pause and I'm just um, do you want me to adjust your arrangement? <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to play it or do you want me to? Uh, let's switch. Switch Before. chairs? Yeah. Before. Take the captain's chair. Oh, the captain's chair. That's right. Captain. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is weird. I'm in the front row seat. I know. Oh my God. Now people can actually see my face. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be immensely better since I'm the one in control of the mouse. Okay. <laughs> uh oh right. I do need um I do need a head covering, so let me take care of that real quick here. <clears throat> there we go. I hope that suffices for everybody. Thank you. Okay, let's start. Let's start this party without Jake. A committee of elders normally meets with a wrongdoer only one time. However, the governing body has decided that the committee may decide to meet with the person more than once. Why? At Revelation 2, 21, regarding that woman Jezebel, Jesus said, I gave her time to repent. We hope that through the loving efforts of the elders, Jehovah will help a wayward Christian to come back to his proper senses and repent. If he That's right. Thank you. Um I am muted. I was muted. See, <laughs> I'm not used to doing this, so I feel like really out of sorts. Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me? I thought I was unmuted. Oh, okay. I, I'm unmuted now. You know what, Apostate Barbie? I can't, I can't help it. I can't help it. But, uh, Oh, I can't. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways. <laughs> so, um, we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> Jehovah did say no voice. He said, Christina, you talk too much. We need to silence you. Um, I forgot what I was, what we were listening to. So I'm going to go back. <laughs> what the hell is happening? No, I'm just enjoying my life. Okay. And and doing a great job at this live stream. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's start. Yeah. In 24 and 25, adjust our current arrangement. Presently, 
a committee of elders normally meets with a wrongdoer only one time. However, the governing body has decided that the committee may decide to meet with the person more than once. Why? May At decide, Revelation 2, by the way. 21, <laughs> regarding that woman Jezebel, Jesus said, oh, I right. gave her time to repent. Okay, why are they using the example of Jezebel? Why is it women, like a woman's specific example? Oh, I didn't even notice that. Because there's plenty of other examples where they he could have used to indicate that Jehovah is merciful and loving, but they're using the example of Jezebel. I'm, I'm not saying that she was like, like the like a great example of feminism or anything like that. But I like, think so. I think feminist icon Jezebel. <laughs> I should wear makeup like her and like in the Bible story. <laughs> 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 That's how I think of Jezebel. <laughs> I'm watching the Real Housewives of Dallas, oh, and yeah. one of one of the like the moms or whatever, she literally like has like eyeshadow kicked on like Jezebel. I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's interesting. Okay, so he's using Jezebel as an example of like somebody who was adjusted in my yes. understanding. I'm pretty sure that's what he was trying to say. But ultimately, she was thrown to the fucking dogs. Well, she didn't repent. So anybody uh, who doesn't repent, that's what you're gonna. That's the old heave ho out the window the, into, <laughs> into the dog pit. Jezebel. Jesus said, "I gave her time to repent." Jesus gave her time. We hope that through the loving efforts of the elders. Jehovah will help a wayward Christian to come back to his proper senses and repent. Before they if he repents, <laughs> the committee will provide shepherding so that the person can escape from Satan's snares and keep making straight paths for his feet. This arrangement reflects the same effort that Jehovah personally right made to help David <laughs> and the nation of Israel to repent. What about baptized minors, those under 18 years of age, who engage in serious wrongdoing? Are we muted? People are saying that we're muted. It's my fault if we are. What? <laughs> no. Yes. What the fuck, people? I hear you. Okay, so All you right. guys can hear. I trust Skuma right. more than anybody <laughs> in the world. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I love you. Jesus loves you. He tried to reason with Jezebel, but she just had to be mauled to death by the dogs. Uh, Why do I do my preacher character more? I don't know. Maybe because I just found him inside me just now. Do you want to switch spots now? Do you? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm like piloting a plane and I don't have my license. <laughs> well, we know how Elon Musk feels about female pilots. Oh, we do? And black pilots, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. There's clips of a Don News Lemon interview to me. where he talks about... <laughs> well, he's tweeted about it. Oh, you mean Mis X'd about it? He's X'd about it. <laughs> Mr. X himself has many thoughts on pilots of any other... Gender or race than he, white men? He's a white supremacist, is what we're trying to say. <laughs> it's what we're trying to say. It's what we're trying to Under say. Under our current arrangement, and we did say it. such a baptized minor, along with his Christian parents, must Only meet with a committee of elders. Under our new arrangement, two elders will meet with the minor and his Christian parents. Okay, I included this uh, yeah, you did. in the opening montage because yes. listen to this. Actually, what the fuck are we doing? We could have subtitles on. I didn't do that. You did that. I actually am the one who just turned them on. So, But you also wrong. didn't turn them on to begin with. So. I thought I got you <laughs> with the law of verbal traps. Okay. No, no, I was raised a Jehovah's Witness, so I'm smarter. Than <laughs> <laughs> Your life was verbal trap. Yes. Um, also, I wore a head covering when you left. Wait, what did you wear? <laughs> <laughs> what? That made me spill coffee all over my use goddamn my, pants. Use my head cover. <laughs> it's all coming together. I unironically. <laughs> Spilled a hot coffee all over my lap because of that. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Sorry. Okay, no, but listen to this because he says the same thing twice in a row. He's like, our older arrangement with this and our new arrangement is the yes! same thing. And I was like listening to it. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, all what? the same. Under our current arrangement, such a baptized minor, along with his Christian parents, must meet with a committee of elders. Under our new arrangement, 
two elders will meet with the minor and his Christian parents. Is that not what he just said? Am I going insane or did he just say the same thing, but he like switched it or, okay. All right, so all right. here's, here's the thing that I think might be different is that the minor and the elders meet, but now it's the minor and his Christian parents are meeting. But they, but but they I, do that. No, because right? I was going to say, my sister was disfellowshipped when she was younger. Along with his Christian parents. No, no, I know that it, you're right. It did used to be for sure that the parents did not meet. Right. My sister had to meet with the elders by herself and she wasn't even like yeah. a legal adult yet. I was thinking of, you know, my cousin who was just yeah, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. wasn't that long. I mean, I guess it was probably 10 or 15 years ago. But that seems really weird. I know, but what is time? True. But he's implying okay. that it currently go, go back a little bit more. Yeah, Cause I want to under our current arrangement, such a baptized minor along with his Christian parents must meet with a committee of elders. It's, Under our new two, it's two, two elders, elders will meet now. with the minor and his. But the committee is just three. Why is this better? Because see how he said. Yeah, you're the right. Committee of elders. You're right. And now it's two elders will meet with the minor. A committee. And you you're right. You caught it. It's the committee. That's the difference. Yeah. And the committee is three elders. And in other places, do does do they meet with the entire body of elders? Like that's my that's why no, I'm confused. No, a judicial committee is three people. So he's like he's literally saying before an elder, no, sorry, before three elders no, and the minor true. and the Christian parents were together, and now two elders will meet with the minor and the Christian parents. That's it, I think. That is so weird. But also, I don't know. Let's see. Does anybody, did anybody, uh, yeah, say anything in the. No. Everyone agreed that I was right. Mm, yeah, I'm sure that they <laughs> did. Yeah, focus on the ones that, you, that say that. But this is the thing that's, that's weird. Like he's saying that the current arrangement, the parents are involved, but he, that's not true. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, my, if they, nothing's changed. Up until this point, my sister was disfellowshipped in early 2000s, and my parents weren't per permitted to go in there with her. Yeah. So we're, we're talking like, even though that's what he's saying, and now the number of elders permitted to be in that, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's very... No, you're you're right. Like it's semantics now. I think they're literally just lying because, like yes. Jones here says, I was DF'd in 2016, 2017 as a minor, and that was not the rule. I met with the elders by myself. Right. So he's saying that it was the rule, but it totally wasn't. So, are the governing body members are they just oblivious to the fact that like elders in different places are? I hate you. Um. Again, the reviews are in two reviews. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I'm just, I'm two just... reviews and two elders. <laughs> I see. I see. I'm in a judicial committee. One cop. <laughs> no, so it just makes me wonder like, were elders in different congregations in different parts of the United States or the country, were they doing things like on their own terms yeah. and the governing body members were oblivious to that? I don't know. I, that's really weird. It's weird that he's making it seem like parents were involved before when they definitely they weren't. weren't. Like my parents, like my mom was really upset by it. Like my dad was too, but she is the more vocal of the the two of them. Well, you know what I, I'm wondering about now is like we always see on like TikTok, like Apostate Barbie talks about this uh, uh one of our other friends <laughs> talking about this <laughs> that like the they would get comments all the time like that's not true that's not what happened to me i was joking with this blah 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 mm -hmm. but there is a disparity despite them talking about unity there is a disparity in how congregations handle things and so maybe they're trying to i don't know streamline things more maybe but the thing of it is you can't you can't hive mind humans because we're all raised in different environments we have different personalities things are going to be interpreted differently our perspectives are going to be different from another person so you literally you can't streamline humans there's too many variables to have to contend with to do that 
yeah yeah interesting incognito says if the minor was living in a home even baptized the head of the house had the option to be present now both can huh yeah. okay and impossible barbara says women are right i don't know thank don't know you well, okay hashtag not all women are right <laughs> no hashtag <laughs> men are never right <laughs> hashtag least. yes all gamers <laughs> At least we're, we're, we're sometimes right. You are never right. I don't know. These guys are right all the time. It's amazing. His Christian mm, parents. Yeah, never, never. The elders all, will find out what la, steps la, the parents la, have la. already <laughs> taken to help their child la, 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 come to la, repentance. La, la, la. <laughs> if the minor has a good attitude and the parents are reaching him, the two elders might decide that it isn't necessary to take the matter any further. Good attitude is quite subjective, by the way. See, this is why <laughs> I feel like judicial committees are like it's entrapment because you're not basing anything like there might be evidence of wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. But what what is somebody's definition of evidence? And also, what is somebody's definition of good attitude? Because when my sister was disfellowshipped, she yeah. in her judicial committee asked for help mm -hmm. and they they decided to disfellowship her anyways yeah and there was this idea that it was something like like a serious sin when it was just it was other issues that she yeah. was going through it wasn't yeah. and it wasn't a serious sin but they felt like she didn't have a good attitude my sister is if you can believe it more sassy than i am it's true. So. And I can't believe it, but it is true. <laughs> so if somebody feels like she's being like dismissive or like she's going toe to toe with them, like they might interpret that as not having a good attitude when in reality, that's just who she is. This is another thing that I think is really important is that in every instance, yes. um, he just says that the elders might decide the elders may do this committee may do this. And so it's still allowing for the same Issues. gaps in the system. Yes. They're still giving carte blanche to elders to do the old thing where they just, you know, one meeting, they think you're guilty. This, and fuck you. You're out. This is the thing that I dislike. And when you, when you made that video about the usage of we, Oh yeah. Yeah. And as, and I feel like I may be repeating myself, but I do, do it, all. it all the time. So <laughs> jinx, you owe me a Coke. Um, so as a social work student, and I'm not saying that I have like this outstanding knowledge of the field, but as we're being taught in my program, we're being taught to be concrete with our words and our sentences when yes. reflecting back <clears throat> other people's feelings or thoughts or experiences and not to be vague. Vague statements allow for interpretation that could cause confusion, misunderstanding, things like yeah. that. If you want there to be clear direction and help, you have to be concrete. You cannot be vague in any way. So the vague words that are being used in this specific broadcast of might decide, may happen, you know, may decide to do X, Y, or Z. Like yeah. those are all vague terms that can be interpreted to suit the situation that the elders who are part of the judicial committee feel suit the situation. Yeah. Not if there was a concrete, like, with the blood issue yeah. there's concrete words that say we do not accept blood transfusion so people are like well i can't do that the same thing should happen with anything else yeah that they they come out and say is like uh is a organizational arrangement like don't be vague about it if you want it to be done correctly correctly quote unquote don't be vague about how you 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 are wording your direction. This also, okay, there's a couple of comments that I mm -hmm. want to shout out that are really good. Writing Happy Hour says, Dis disagreement equals bad attitude. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Not uh, demonstrating complete fealty to the elders and being like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, right. And then there's this. Uh, he's putting the whole responsibility. This is a slighted laser. He's putting the whole responsibility on the elders so they can't get sued. Meaning like the governing body can't sued is what mm -hmm. it seems like i think that's absolutely correct mm -hmm. check out um the falling towers video on how elders get thrown under the bus legally for this kind of stuff it's really True good that. 
actually WMJ's comment I think is also very interesting. This seems like a real possibility. The parents tagging along could be a way they can see where the parents are in their head, maybe punish them too for not having enough family study. Oh, that's interesting. That's I like that. Very deceptive. Yeah. I wouldn't. Well, I don't that. like it. <laughs> no, no, it's very deceptive, which is on par for everything that they do. So I wouldn't put it past them. Yep. Also very true. Yeah. We'll see what they do in the new shepherd book. Comes true out. that. Man, oh man. Okay. We got 222 people watching right now. How do you feel about that? Well, I apparently don't know how to unmute the mic and I wore a <laughs> head covering. So <laughs> I'm feeling really good. <laughs> hey, I also do that like every stream and I never wear a head covering. So. Well, you don't have to. Well, you're a man. I, I've been dabbling in hats, though. We can say it. I've been trying to wear hats more recently. And uh, I love that you're describing it as dabbling. I've always been anti hat. I've been trying to be more pro hat. <laughs> Hashtag all hats matter. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Of course, the elders will occasionally check with the parents to make sure that the minor okay. is getting the help he needs. However, what if a baptized minor unrepentantly persists in a wrong course? I'm going to actually pause it here because I want to get Christina's feedback on this. Um, just to catch up with a couple comments. Yes, by the way. I recommend everyone dabbling in hats. Writing Happy Hour says, I was told they may reprove me if I broke up with my fiance and promised to never speak to him again. But I said I was marrying him. So I wasn't taking the counsel and I got the guillotine. That's the thing. Like when they say listening, like when they say listening to the elders, they mean obeying. They mean like doing what the elders say. <laughs> That's what listening means to them. Can anyone explain the new stuff around interacting with disfellowship people? It's not the exact same as it's, it's almost, a, it basically is exactly the same. The one thing that is different, the only thing that's different, and, and we'll see it because they haven't really gotten into it yet in the, in the stream, sorry, in, in the update. But when you come to the kingdom hall as a disfellowship person, like let's say I go to a kingdom hall before I would expect that nobody talked to me except for if they did, I would have to be like, oh, I'm just fellowship. And they'd be like, oh, sorry. And it would be awkward. And then I would go to the back hall. And now they're saying that witnesses, if their conscience allows them to, can say a greeting to a disfellowship person and say like, hi, glad you're here. And that's it. <clears throat> so it's literally just, you're allowed to say hi to disfellowship people now. That's as far as it goes. <clears throat> Absolutely ridiculous. It's as though they're trying to pull back members of their exclusive club that no one wants to be a part of. Yes, old person user, you have the illusion of choice, but you need to choose what they say. That's exactly right. Like, And my dad did this again to me like when I saw him a few months ago or a month or two ago. I was like, I just wanted you to not be so quick to make your decision and leave, like to, to really listen and to try and, you know, choose differently. Like the, the reality is at some point, if you don't agree with what the organization says, it's either you shut up about it and don't talk about it or you get disfellowshipped. Right. So anyway, here is the, um, what if a baptized minor is bad? If a baptized minor unrepentantly persists in a wrong course. In that case, a committee of elders would meet with him along with his Christian parents. The governing body is confident that these adjustments reflect Jehovah's desire to lead sinners to repentance. And then this last thing is also just the same exact thing. He says the same thing again. He says, well, if they're not repentant, then they would also meet again with the Christian parents. But I think he's implying that like the judicial committee, the parents would be there. And that is a little bit different in terms of just, I think they're trying to cover their ass in terms of CSA, sexual abuse and stuff, maybe. I feel like, so when you, when we like look at how he was talking about like, the may like governing body may be in the committee may whatever like the vagueness and then you listen to how he's ending this and he's like we are a sure we are re or 
we are sure that this is Jehovah's clear direction, like the yeah. difference in the wording. Yeah. <laughs> there's confidence behind that. And then there's vagueness behind the other, the other thing that he said. <laughs> he chased instead of one, he goes unrepentant. <laughs> Do you BJ Novaks? Hey. In that case, a committee of elders would meet with him along with his Christian parents. Just him, though. So women, the governing body is yourself. confident oh, good. that these adjustments reflect Jehovah's desire to lead sinners to repentance. He wants them to come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil. I just <laughs> spilled on my crotch. <laughs> God there, damn it, I have to a, go to the store after this. There's a hole in your lip or something. There, I have a drinking problem. <laughs> that was my dad's favorite joke every time he spilled something on himself. Um, also, he had a drinking problem, though. Um, not really. I, <laughs> I just spilled coffee on my crotch. My face is like Mark Sanderson's right here. <laughs> Escape from the snare of the devil. I mean, it's not exactly like they're this progressive fucking Episcopalian group now or it's no, he does not desire anyone to be destroyed <laughs> but he desires all to attain to repentance <laughs> let's move on to our second mm, scripture yeah it's first corinthians mm -hmm. 5 13 which says remove the wicked yeah actually this is a good comment from kim silvio too like that's what they do in court mm -hmm. um is just just for people watching it, it, when they are confronted on on their csa practices they put it all on the parents. They're like, we don't have Sunday schools. People are isolated. They're always assigned to work with their parents. Like they always put it on the parent. Yeah. And so I think having language like this, again, she's right. It is mm -hmm. to kind of make it seem more like, no, no, no. This is all on the parents. Yeah. Agreed. No collusion. No puppet is what they're saying. I think that it's because of the Norway thing, because they can now say the parents were involved. We made sure they were a part of the decision, a little bit less liability. Yeah. I guess so. No, it, you're right. You're right. It is that. But it's also like, well, the parents are fucking cult victims too. It's not really, this is like, our legal system is just not set up to deal with coercion like this. Like, it's not set up to deal with cults mm -hmm. and high control groups yeah, and I think we're seeing that in some ways as we try and litigate people involved with a, a very notable call in the United States. Yeah, that I won't get into, but it's hard to prove that somebody is operating in bad faith or that somebody mm -hmm. was coerced because of you know cult like indoctrination. It's just you know, kid person from among yourselves. <laughs> the Bible clearly teaches <laughs> that an unrepentant wrongdoer should be removed from the congregation. And really, it's a consequence that the wrongdoer has chosen. Why so? <laughs> Why? Well, because he refuses to respond <laughs> to repeated loving attempts by the elders to lead him to repentance. This Here's my thing. Oh. You go. You go. <laughs> I was just going to say. I was screaming about this on Friday. The elders loving, lovingly leading them to repentance. Repeatedly. That to me is like, you've seen, we've all seen like, true crime documentaries yeah and like the video footage of like cops interrogating people until they finally say what they want yeah. them to say coerced confessions that's what that reminds me of if yeah. i'm being repeatedly talked to about something specifically and to, and and i'm not telling them what they want to hear and as a child or a minor who doesn't really have a whole lot of experience in the world or like just in life in general, I'm going to eventually tell them what they want to hear. And that to me doesn't indicate that, you know, maybe that that person did do X, Y, or Z, and that's what's led them to the judicial committee. But it doesn't mean that they should be disfellowshipped yeah. or reproved or whatever. What it means is you're now sitting with me for the third time talking to me about this. Yep. And I'm getting tired of repeating myself. And I, I just want to please the people surrounding me. That's why. Yeah. I'm I'm telling you what, what you want me to tell you at that point. Exactly. And this is also really true. Like, it, 
child, children just don't have a lot of rights. They like, don't. This is what I was talking about with um, Jan in our chat about Norway is one of the reasons why witnesses were able to be held to account is that children have rights in Norway. And, you know, re the Republican Party fights to keep child marriage intact in mm -hmm. the United States. Like they because they have this evangelical base and mm -hmm. the, this kind of regressive Christianity is so important. They, they fight to keep this kind of old timey Christian theocratic bullshit. Yeah. I mean, they <clears throat> want to get rid of like child labor laws. Like you, you as a child yeah. are yeah. not looked at as a human. Yeah, exactly. You're, you, you're looked at like property at that point. Well, there was that weird, Sorry, I know it's getting like political or whatever, but I don't know if it was like Amy Comey Barrett in one of their court decisions or, or in some statement, they talked about like the nation's dwindling like supply of of infants. <laughs> you know, they they want to force birth because yeah. they just see people as as cattle. As, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I hate this victim blaming crap. It's, it's it sucks. It makes even me when not. the elders inform a person that he's being removed from the congregation. He won't be left hopeless. Uh, the committee oh, will goodness. not simply what explain what teacher. steps he can take to be welcomed back into the congregation. Sobbing with the love. What else will they do? The elders will explain that they'd like to meet with the individual again after a few months to see if he's had a change of heart. Like if the individual shunning. is willing to meet, back now. the elders will make a warm appeal oh, for it'll him be to warm. repent. It'll what, be warm. Was the appeal that you received ever warm? Well, you can listen to the audio. They do their warm voice shtick. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they adopt this kind of voice because mm -hmm. you are instructed that this is what love sounds like. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what the BE book teaches you. When you want to sound loving, you put on this condescending, infantilizing tone where you're like, um, but... You did get baptized, and even though you were 12, you knew Jehovah, so you even knew. though when you're 12, you're not even a teenager. Yeah. You're not allowed to drive. Yeah. You're not allowed to drink. You're not allowed to vote. You're not allowed to do anything that a legal adult would be able to do. Yep. But you're 12 years old, you're supposed to understand what getting baptized actually means. When, yeah. when, like, you don't have any concept of what commitment is at that point. Yeah. Because your brain is seeing things in a more, like, two dimension. Yeah. And it, it's, it's not... It doesn't have all of the needed functions when you're 12 year old, 12 years old, as opposed to like when you're 25. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so you're telling me that a 12 year old can commit to being baptized and understands the repercussions of, you know, breaking that commitment when they legally aren't even able to like drive a car. Yeah. Yeah. Or rent a car. Like when you're 25, yeah. even until 25 as a JW, you're so naive. Yes, well, that's agreed. like, I was told by my therapist that I like developmentally, I'm mm -hmm. like 10 years delayed, Yeah, I'm which I was very this. flattered. By. I was like, Ooh, that means I'm only 32 or no, wait, no, that means I'm only 22. I can't do math. Great. I am actually, <laughs> I'm actually 32, <laughs> but you know, like a 25 year old Jehovah's witness guy is functionally a Reddit incel who literally, just reads the fucking Bible. I was a lot. literally like, gonna make that same comparison. That's so funny. That's all you are. Like you are raised in this hermetically sealed environment. You're mm -hmm. raised in a bubble. You're not allowed to have normal relationships with people. You're certainly not allowed to have any kind of normal like, sexual outlet unless mm -hmm. you're married. But that means that your marriage might not necessarily be founded on like shared values and longevity, but just because you want to have sex. And, you know, it's just you really are put at an extreme disadvantage leaving this group because mm -hmm. I don't think that I realized how behind I was 
developmentally in terms of like emotional maturity yeah person. yeah absolutely and coping with stress and mm -hmm. you know being worldly is actually a good thing it, like that it means like well traveled and well adjusted yes. yes. <laughs> but in joe's witnesses it means that you're satanic i thought you were putting a goldfish in my ear <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. And return. This fucking guy. What about <laughs> individuals who were disfellowshipped in the past, perhaps okay. even many years ago? We don't care. In some cases, they may not even recall the reason they were disfellowshipped. Oh, they recall. Oh, shit. Oh, they recall. Oh, they recall why they Unless they have like dementia or Alzheimer's, they're one hundred percent going to remember why they were disfellowshipped. One of the most traumatizing events <laughs> of your life. Who? Who whomst? Name me one person on God's green flat earth who doesn't remember they are th like this defining moment. I was gonna say where they had to sit in this tribunal with these creepy old guys and they were shunned. I remember what I was doing when 9-11 happened. You're gonna tell me that something more personal, like this fellowshipping, I'm gonna forget about. And I think that we both agree. That when I got this fellowship, that was worse than 9-11. You know, I think that's what we're both saying. That is not, nope, I cannot be associated with that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to. They may have abandoned their wrong course years ago. The governing body has decided that the elders should visit such ones, pray with them, and make a warm appeal for them to return to the congregation. And you know it's going to be genuinely warm because the warmth is mandatory. They're telling the elders that they have to be warm or else. So you know it's genuine and they have your best interests in mind. Really, they just have their own best best interests in mind because they don't want to get in trouble for not being more warm and, and welcoming to you. Yeah. It's all it's all self-serving. Ah, praying with a disfellowship person is a very new thing. That's that's interesting. Um, I oh. forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. I remember going on a shepherding call with an elder, and he's like, "No, we don't pray." I don't remember, like, what? Why? I was <laughs> is gonna the prayer think... gonna like bounce off their head or something like a rubber? <laughs> yes, bullets. That's it, what rubber bullets do. Right? It's gonna bounce off them and kill you. Rubber and glue. It's that that kind of situation. <laughs> I was gonna say. I remember when. Um, I remember when I accident accidentally uh talked to a disfellowshipped person i think i was probably like 16 mm. or something like that and my friend and i kept seeing this sister who was standing by herself at multiple meetings and we went over and we introduced ourselves and she was like i'm sorry i can't talk to you i'm disfellowshipped and as a pme jw like the dread and fear yes, that you that feel stomach sinks and oh. now that i'm like thinking about this you know almost 20 years later i'm like how like how did that sister feel when she had to say you can't talk to me i'm disfellowshipped like just the amount of like horror and like upset like her being upset that she even has to say th this thing yes. to somebody yeah because outside of this context nobody would understand why we reacted the way that we did or why she was reacting because it's such a it's such a like minute specific thing yeah and now i i feel like with this new arrangement of saying hello or greeting a disfellowship person, like, is there going to be a brother standing nearby referee refereeing the conversation to make sure you don't go into any other conversation other than, hi, how are you? Somebody asked uh, in the stream I did on Friday, like, okay, so is there going to be like an elder or a servant assigned to like, make sure that at least one person has said hi to the disfellowship person like, coming for real, in. Like, like, it, it makes me wonder, like, okay, that's fine and great. But what happens when you get past the uh, hello part and you're standing there in front of the disfellowship person not knowing that they're disfellowship? Oh, don't worry. We will see a demonstration and it's very helpful. <laughs> um, I want to shout out a couple. They thought of everything. They did. Um, Tower says Mark went from boss baby to boss. 
<laughs> and that's amazing. I think that this is uh, the key to a lot of this. Dan says only naive parents of disfellowship children believe this shit. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a huge part of it. Yeah. It is nice for witness parents to be told, maybe your kid doesn't even remember, or like not even your kid, but like your sister, your yeah. brother, whoever yep. is disfellowship. They might not even remember it was who knows how long ago it was. Right. And that's comforting for them to hear. Mm -hmm. I think that what all of these changes are about is not about being actually more progressive or actually more inclusive or actually kinder or actually less culty. It's about making members feel that that is the case. Yeah, They agreed. feel like they are a more loving, accepting religion. Mm -hmm. That's the excitement that you're seeing from witnesses texting you and me and other intelligent <laughs> people. Well, not me, because I'm an apostate, but presumably some people. Um, <laughs> Does that make me an apostate by association? I mean, only you can answer that question, but you are... Sound off in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think yes, but I'm biased. I, you know, I think everyone's an apostate. All right, let's watch a little bit more. If a person's been away from the congregation for many years, he would no doubt be very weak spiritually. Therefore, if such a person is willing, the elders could arrange for him to have a Bible study even before he's reinstated. Of course, the individual would have to want to return to the congregation, and the elders would always be the ones to arrange for such a study. In I don't really understand what that means. What does it mean that the elders would be the ones to arrange well, for the study? <laughs> It means that any like rank and file person isn't allowed to go up to a disfellowship person and go like, hey, do you want to study? Mm, yeah, yeah. It, only the elders have control over what that study arrangement looks like you're, for a disfellowship person. Right. El so you're you're saying elders have to be the ones to do it. Yes. yes. You're right. That is what he's saying. Um, Bill the Pimo says, when I was DF'd, I reported a brother because he tried talking to me and I didn't want him interfering with my discipline. Mm, Holy shit. That's but that, rough. I really appreciate you sharing that because I, I think it's really easy to forget about mm -hmm. the people who this is actually going to impact because yeah. it has. Like, I've been really upset, actually. I won't say their name on stream, but, you know, like somebody I know has been going back to meetings since all these changes happened. And they clearly just, I was really excited when I got to fellowship to be like, oh, wow, you know, my, my friend is to fellowship too, but he's uh, never been quite comfortable with me. I got the sense, you know, he didn't say that outright, mm -hmm. wasn't, wasn't comfortable with me criticizing the organization and stuff. And now with the changes, he doesn't have to shave his disfellowshipping beard. It's easy enough to throw on a a tie and now mm -hmm. he doesn't even have to do that right yeah. so people who believe it's the truth when they sit and they get this fellowship they believe they deserve it they believe it's what they need and they're like okay well i'm gonna go back at some point mm -hmm. that's it's really fucked up it's really like people who blame themselves for their own assault or abuse or yeah it's an abusive tactic like instead of the person who's putting them in that position taking responsibility for their actions they're putting that on the person including whatever shame and guilt that person's already feeling so they're having like double the burden yeah. of what caused the disfellowshipping to occur yeah that's not fair it's not their responsibility to try and figure out like how that other how that how the elders feel about x y or z they should be worried about their own well-being but you can't do that when the disfellowshipping arrangement doesn't allow you to like understand yourself and yeah. the actions of other people yeah you are only trying to get back to where you are but you'll never actually be back to that point yeah this is also an interesting question, by the way, you know, like if it's a minor child that needs the study, they're involving themselves with minors. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, is it, they, they always open up this can of worms with these changes yeah. because there's so many new problems. I mean, that's what half of crisis of conscience is. It's like, mm. 
you're, you're plugging leaks in a sinking that's boat. Why, you know? That's why it's it should always be systemic issues that are being resolved or fixed. But to do that means to acknowledge that you as a whole have caused these systemic issues to exist. Yeah. It's true. People who aren't disfellowshipped or disassociated for doctrinal issues go through emotional hell thinking they're actually just being mm -hmm. a joke. That's the thing. Man, oh, man. All right. Let's, let's get into this. Imitation of Jehovah's mercy toward imperfect sinners. You know, like how we fucking mercifully destroyed so many cities <laughs> and had, okay. We want to reach out and help as many as possible to know that the door is open they were gay. for them to come back to the congregation. <laughs> if you they are a disfellowship stuff. person and listening to this update, to God killed them. we urge you to accept the efforts of the elders to help you return to the congregation. If you're living in an area where you don't know the local elders, please feel free to call or visit the local kingdom hall. I wish I could tell you <laughs> what Christina muted our mic to say because it was very funny, but I no, I will not repeat it. But this face really sums it up. It's very funny. Okay, I let me hear this last part. If you're living in an area where you don't know the local elders, oh, yeah, like, go to the website and find it. Okay. But how do you know that that website exists if you're... Because like, somebody sent you this video. You just keep on clicking on JW.org. Say you... It says it right there in the background. Say you've been disfellowship forever. You're not involved with the XJW community. You are you haven't really talked to anybody in the local congregation because you've moved from one place to another. You've been out for like 20 years or whatever. Yeah. How do you know that there's a website to go to? I does God direct you? That's right. You see, <laughs> this is the whole like fantasy narrative that Jehovah's Witnesses paint. Like the disfellowship person who's been out for 20 years riding the bus, thinking about how fucking sad they are. And then they look out the window and they see these happy witnesses standing by a cart and says JW.org. And they're like, huh? And they look on the website and they're like, oh, and then they look up a congregation <laughs> and then they go and they're all scared and shout, Neh! And then one witness says hi, and they're like, oh, they were allowed to say hi to me? And then they come back, and they're like, this is truly God's are favorite. You, are you re recounting the the demonstration that they show? <laughs> Only <laughs> partially, but no. I think <laughs> I'm just, like, mashing them all together in my head. Because they've definitely done that thing where it's like, yeah. let me do my voice of um, the, the AI-sounding voice of somebody in one of these videos. Like, I was disfellowshipped for 25 years. I knew that I needed to come back to Jehovah. I thought that the world would be nice, that I could be gay, but I was sad. That's what all the videos sound like. To me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was sad. I wasn't gay. I wasn't happy. I didn't like it. It was icky. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> Oh, boy. When a person has been removed from the congregation, we stop keeping company with that person. Yes. Not mm -hmm. even eating with such a man. I eat with all That the means we don't people. socialize yeah. with those who are removed from the congregation. Obviously. However, that does not mean that a Christian could not invite a disfellowship person to attend a congregation meeting. Isn't that like that eating disfellowship with person them, could be a relative, a former Bible student, no, I don't or think someone so. you were close to in the past. A text message saying, "Please how come to the meeting." How appropriate this adjustment is at this time. It, but you just heard how appropriate it is. How appropriate it is. Wait, how appropriate is it? I don't know. <laughs> They, nobody else fucking does this. Nobody else does this rhetorical thing of how encouraging it is, how appropriate this is. Right. What a fucking weird thing that they do. They're just like, what we just said was good and awesome and you believe it. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. Like, they don't pose it as a question to answer. They pose it as a rhetorical question because they're like, this is, this is what you believe. It's appropriate, the adjustments that have taken place, because... Jehovah is merciful and loving. <laughs> they were like, you're not like, send us your feedback. How do you feel about these right. adjustments? We want to get your feedback so that we're just No. How appropriate it is. We can't even say. 
so appropriate. You, you should already know how appropriate it is. I'm that's why I'm presenting a rhetorical question. <laughs> this yeah, I think that's it. You say hi. Um, you can sit over here and uh, I hope you come back for the meeting. Like, I mean, yes, that's to me, that is like the like just ignore me at that point. Like, to me, I feel like I like on a personal level think back to like when I was like a teenager in high school and I wanted to like sit with the popular kids, and at one point they like. They were like, yeah, come sit with us. It's fine. It was like Mean Girls. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no. But... You can sit with us. <laughs> but once I sat with them, it was like, I didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to say. So I might as well have just sat by myself. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, I don't know. It you're recreates only... that dynamic. Yes. You're only thinking of yourself when you're saying hi to a disfellowship person. Yeah, the <laughs> Posse Barbie wrote a funny comment on accident. I'm a woman, can you eat me with? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I never tried to do that voice before, but I think people are saying that it was good. It was great. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. It's better than hearing Mark Sanderson talk for 20 minutes. How appropriate this adjustment is. It's so appropriate. We think about how appropriate it is. So, also, how who fucking compliments something based on, oh, that was so appropriate, wasn't it? I loved how appropriate that was. <laughs> but also, Fuck this. <laughs> is, also, isn't that statement subjective? Like, what if it was done yeah. like 10 weeks from now instead of right now that's, that's a good it, does that mean that it wasn't it wasn't appropriate to present it 10 weeks from now this would not have been appropriate in 2009 it would not have been appropriate in 2026 but it is appropriate At now this time and how <laughs> i hate these people i hate these men so much. as we're preparing for the most important meeting of the year the memorial which will oh, be held on Sunday, it's March the 24th. most appropriate time. What if a disfellowship person comes to a congregation meeting? Saturday. Under our current arrangement, Early we don't Saturday. say a greeting to individuals who've been removed from the congregation. This is how sad you should be as a disfellowship person. Every Jehovah's Witness watching this will instantly understand that this person is a fellowship because they are sad and slightly disheveled. Really what why she's sad is cuz she's about to go into a kingdom hall where nobody's going to acknowledge her and it has nothing to do with the fact that she's lived a life outside of the organization. She's about to go into uh like an enclosed fluorescently lit compound where she's going to hear boring fake voices and, for fucking two and a half hours. And like <laughs> Unnatural highs and hellos, like. Oh well, let, well, let's see. Let's see how it went. However, the governing body has decided oh, that publishers can use that. their Bible-trained conscience that. to decide whether to give a simple greeting and welcome a disfellowship oh, oh, oh. individual oh, freak, who attends a congregation meeting. <laughs> Be nice Hi. and freak, sweetie. So good to see you here. Mm, thank you. While we wouldn't have an extended conversation or socialize with such a person, we do not need to ignore him completely. Did oh, she, how appropriate. Did, did she sit down with a smile because she was greeted the way that she was? Yes. She's like, hmm, guess it's not so bad after all. <laughs> <laughs> My past experience have been far worse than this one. Yes. Oh, God. Fucking Peach just. Did she pee? Maybe. Somebody did. We have we have the puppy pads in here, and she was, I think, she, a, a distinct waft of pee just uh, hit my peach. nostrils. Peach, some peach pee. Hey, thanks, Maria. Uh, hey. I remember being commended on how appropriate my clothing was, and couldn't help but feel like it was a way to say we're watching you, little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the underhanded compliments. Gotta the, love them. That's yeah. You're not about to say like, "Hey, great to see you." It has to be like. No, I well, that's sorry. The, that's I mean, that's what they did. They're like oh, so good to see. Oh, hi, there. and like barely touched her hand. Like, hey, yeah, oof. You it was hot to the touch. You have leprosy. It was hot. The devil's temperature. <laughs> oh my god. 
I hate it. Are you going to be That brings us to our to third me? scripture. It's yes. <laughs> you have to watch the part here. Let me pass okay, the okay, word okay. to the part. I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to be annoying. No, you're not at all. You are the audience saying the stream is going on for too long. <laughs> <laughs> but you you haven't even watched the, the dress and grooming part. So oh, watch, watch right. this. We can just watch it real quick. The governing body has asked me to... Re we can watch it really quick, actually. We can watch it at 2x speed. <laughs> Number two. But that's poop, not pee. Sorry. Well, the we're following watching announcement. poop, so... The governing body has decided that sisters may choose to wear slacks when participating in the ministry and when attending Christian meetings, assemblies, and conventions. <laughs> if a sister chooses to wear slacks on such occasions, they should not be casual, but dignified, modest, and appropriate. When a sister has a part on the program, she should wear a skirt or a dress if that is the standard of dress in that land. My, land. My question is: Was there that extensive of like parameters for a brother wearing a beard? That's a good question. They do the same exact thing mm -hmm. with brothers with like suits and ties. By the way, they they're like, you can wear it to the kingdom hall or in the ministry, but if you're on stage, you have to wear a suit and tie. If it's the standard of dress in that land, but like, what the fuck are they talking about? It's not the standard of dress you know anywhere what? to be on a stage wearing a skirt. You know what uh, suit and tie is? JT, album 2020. He'll be on that suit and tie. What does he mean by shit tie shit? I never I understood know. that. I didn't, I, but I love that he says it. But... Did we not see JT in concert? We did when he was touring his. Uh, yeah, the 2020 experience. Was it that? No, I thought it was the uh, Man of the Woods. Man of the Woods. So you're right. You're right. I, that, that was like right after we got married. Yeah. I surprised you with tickets, and then we <laughs> never had money again. <laughs> no, I'm just true. kidding. <laughs> I were... mean, to some extent, that's true. <laughs> no, there was just this brief window where it's like, hey, things are fine. And it was never fine. <laughs> Of course, some sisters may choose to wear a skirt or a dress even when they do not have a part on the program. Oh, you can still In addition, too. brothers may choose not to wear a tie or a jacket when participating in the ministry and when attending Christian meetings, assemblies, and conventions. If a brother chooses not to wear a tie or a jacket on such occasions, he should dress in a manner that is appropriate, modest, and dignified, not casual. When a brother has a part on the program, oh, so he should wear a tie no and a jacket if that is the standard of dress in that land. Okay. Of course, some brothers may choose to wear a tie or a jacket even when they do not have a part on the program. When visiting Bethel, it would be appropriate for brothers to wear a tie and a jacket and for sisters to wear a skirt or a dress, if that is the standard of dress in that land. Why? 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 Why is it okay to wear, like, slacks or no tie in the ministry when that's where, like, public opinion is? Like, you, like, want to stand up as, stand out as a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. In the ministry because it distinguishes you as different. That's the whole thing, right? I think that... They realize that just anybody. Wait, no. I, know, I thought that was really fun. <laughs> Corporcia. Corporcia. <laughs> I like that too. Um, yeah, I don't really. This whole thing is so weird. Because you would think that if you are wearing slacks or no tie, it would be more appropriate, like at home, which the Kingdom Hall as a PNEJW, that is your home. Come home, they keep saying. That's what they keep saying. Yeah. And you would want many people are saying this. <laughs> people that I don't care about. Um, but if you're in the ministry, wouldn't that be the opportunity to like set yourself apart so people know that you're not just like some rando standing next to JW cart? Yeah, I think that they're saying, like, well. Just anybody dressing nice is kind of enough to set yourself apart because the world is just gone to shit. But that's not true because I know a lot of people who are not JWs and they don't have any religious beliefs and they dress better than I do sometimes. Like, Yeah, it's almost like this is completely arbitrary and made up. And by the way... Almost like that, yeah. It, I think we can basically be done. I thought it was interesting that mm. they just say the governing body has decided this. And that's it. Like when it comes yeah. to dress and grooming, we didn't get the 20 minute preamble. Right. Explaining why they're making the decision. It's just like, oh, by the way, this shit's what you can do at the hall now. Anyway, right. bye. They never at any point say that after like consulting the scriptures and like praying about the situation, this is what we've decided. Like the beard thing, they gave a whole goddamn presentation on the history of facial hair. 
I'm not surprised by that. But this, they, they don't I bother. I feel like, to me, it was it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, shit, we need to come up with something. Let's throw this crap together. because it, yeah. it Because they have to, again, it's all about optics. And the thing with Norway happened. And there's only a window of time that they have available before it closes. So this was their opportunity to go like, and you can say hi to disfellowship people and you can <laughs> wear slacks in the ministry and you can wear no tie except for parts. Like, yeah, it's, it, so it's weird. all like slapped together, like some weird mosaic. What do you think? Um, does this move the needle for, for people? It, it just kind of seems to me like based on the response, it's just like, even though this is happening more rapidly, I don't get the sense that the reaction to it is any different. It just seems like the, the precedent is when there's a new announcement, it's exciting because it's new. Right. And it's proof that Jehovah bleh, is not like stagnant or whatever. So I would say from the perspective of somebody who like from reading the perspective of people who are disfellowshipped, inactive, have faded, whatever – that the disfellowshipping arrangement Arrangements. change um, is more upsetting than if they would have just left it alone or just changed it and got rid of it completely. Yeah, it's insulting for yes, people like me. Because you're saying to somebody who's an active witness, you can say hi and let them know that you're happy to see them. But that's it. If your conscience allows it, by the way. Correct. My conscience doesn't allow me to, to say me, hi to those sinners. To me, that's a very, like, superiority com Like, it's superiority yeah. complex. You're looking at disfellowship people were not knowing why they're disfellowshipped as somebody who's inferior. And it it's now my god-given responsibility to make sure that you feel welcome and and warm but and, not too much <laughs> right exactly but i can't be i can't socialize with you i can't have a con full-blown conversation that's why like i'm that's why i feel like either don't talk to me or talk to me yeah this yeah like like lukewarm approach to disfellowshipping is such it, it's upsetting. Yeah, it's a little insulting because yeah. they really haven't changed anything. And no. the fact that they changed so little, it made it seem like it's this incredible fucking outpouring of love from God is uh, it's absurd. Well, and that's yeah. how I feel, too, about like women wearing slacks. Thank yeah. God you've given me permission to wear pants yeah. because I can wear pants in any other context, any other situation, except for when I go out in the ministry and I'm at the kingdom hall. But now you've given me such a loving arrangement. You've, you've given me, you've given me a leeway in ways that I've, I never thought were possible. The men in charge have decided that pants are sometimes okay. Yeah. Uh, guys, you're in a cult. I don't know what to tell you if you're a witness watching this. I love you, and I'm normally, I think, nicer, but this really fucking made me mad. And it's not you, it's them. It's Sander Claus well, and his friends. And that's the thing. Like, I just find everything that this, n these new arrangements have, they, it's presumptuous. There's no indication that it was Jehovah and his Holy Spirit that made these arrangements take place or this change or adjustment, it only sounds like it's them, the men in charge doing all this. So to me, I don't think it'll increase their numbers. If anything, I think it would make people who are already questioning things feel more uncomfortable and may cause them to question things more. It's a uh, harvest siftings a little bit. Yeah. They're like, we're going to make a bunch of changes really fast. It's going to alienate some people. We want them gone anyway because we're a fucking cult. We need to be able to make changes on a dime and yeah. people follow no matter what. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they, they've they calculated that long term. This makes them cozy enough that it'll kind of keep their base satisfied and mm -hmm. not. I, I think that they've, uh, what is it, counted the cost and determined that like, yeah, we're going to lose some people over this, but here are the reasons why people 
are leaving not for doctrinal reasons. These are like a bunch of little things that annoy our members that mm -hmm. we can change without fundamentally changing anything about the religion. But I think that that's where they're wrong. I think that it yeah. would, it's going to end up taking more people away than it is going to... Well, it's certainly not going to bring people in because I think that anybody who comes out of whatever the world or whatever into the organization like they already have a very limited perspective on life so that's why the organization seems appealing yeah people who have a more broad and wide understanding of what life is and who they are and what they want in life like they're not going to be drawn to the organization even despite the new adjustments in arrangement like yeah it's not going to draw people in i agree that it will it'll keep the base steady yeah but if they want to grow their members this isn't the way to do it i don't think there really is i i think that they are realizing that there's there's just never going to be an increase like there was like mm -hmm. in the 90s it's yeah. just over they can't yeah and that's just how it is for religions of their and, ilk worldwide yes i was gonna say yeah religion in general does not have the same support as it did yeah 20 years ago well i think we're gonna wrap it up then yeah right? i'm very hungry you're very hungry <laughs> we've got to get some food so thank you and i think we should just remember who this is all about in the end the governing body the governing body is confident the governing body has decided the governing body has decided. The governing body has concluded. However, the governing body has decided. The governing body has decided. Before we conclude, the governing body has asked me to read the following announcement. We love you all very much.